Welcome to AirVenture 2023, bringing you all the latest from Whitman Regional Airport. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Here's what's coming up on today's show. World War II era Catalina flying boat to be resurrected. Whisk flies at Oshkosh. Volt Aero Casio 330 electric hybrid. These stories and more are coming up on today's special edition of Airborne Unlimited. World War II era Catalina flying boat to be resurrected. Catalina Aircraft, holder of the type certificates for the 285 ACF Catalina, has announced the rebirth of the iconic and legendary Catalina as the Catalina II amphibious turboprop. A production restart program has been formalized for the next generation amphibious aircraft Catalina II twin turboprop amphibious flying boat, and the company is preparing to take orders. Based on the design fundamentals of the FAA and Transport Canada Large Transport Category Certificated 285 ACF Catalina Amphibious Flying Boat, Catalina Aircraft is offering two new production variants, an NGAA Civilian Variant and an NGAA Special Use Variant. The NGAA Catalina II targets two major client groups, the civilian slash commercial operator and the government slash military customer. The NGAA Catalina II will be the largest, fastest, longest range, highest payload and most capable amphibious aircraft available worldwide with Western certifications. Capable of operating from runways, grass, dirt, lakes, rivers, bays and open water, utilizing green power initiatives, the NGAA Catalina II provides civilian, commercial, government and military operators a significant capabilities expansion. The NGAA Catalina II civilian variant is a new production 32,000 pound maximum takeoff weight unpressurized twin turboprop Sea State II capable amphibious flying boat designed to accommodate up to 34 passengers or 12,000 pounds of cargo operating in the private and commercial market segments. Whisk flies at Oshkosh. One of the more avidly anticipated displays is the promised whisk flight demonstration here at Whitman Field. Oshkosh is becoming more and more of a hub for such demonstrations, and the EAA crowds are loving every second of it. Day two of Oshkosh here in the whisk booth, talking today about autonomous EV tolls in the advanced air mobility market. Yeah, so this is our sixth generation aircraft. So the five previous generations, uh, of which we have about 1,600 flight tests on, have helped us to really understand the evolution of not only electric flight but also autonomous flight. So we've been doing this for about 13 years now and uh, going strong. So We're super fortunate to now be fully backed by Boeing. Not only um, does designing and testing and certify a new aircraft take a lot of time and investment, they know what that looks like and so they're the right port partners to support us through that process and um, they have support across the globe. We're not only building and testing and we'll certify this aircraft, um, we also plan to operate it um, and so that's a key piece of how we're approaching this market because it's autonomous, we think operating it um, is a core part. We have a partnership with Air New Zealand, that's our longest partnership to date. It actually was the first partnership of the industry. We also are working with NASA on a number of different pieces. Recently we announced a partnership with Japan Airlines and they bring a lot of great perspective from a maintenance per, um, point of view which is a key piece of how do you safely operate um, this aircraft and this entire operations around the globe. So we've been working with the FAA for years now on building out the safe certification basis and means of compliance to be able to have that this aircraft enter into service safely, fully autonomous. There's no stick and rudder pedals, there's no, uh, there's no secret ability to have a pilot on board, it's always going to be the supervisor on the ground. Many of the other folks in the industry will probably come in it to service in the next couple of years, and so we see ourselves being right on the heels of that um, because we think that this is really how the industry scales, is through autonomy. So, Volt Aero Casio 330 Electric Hybrid. In the past, aviation built whole companies around one type of power system or another, but now hybrid systems are combining the best of a number of worlds to produce a new generation of flying machines. And we see once again how the Oshkosh world allows it to have a focal point. We're here at the booth with Volt Aero talking about the new Casio 330 with CEO and CTO Jean Boti. Jean, thank you so much. We had the opportunity to interview you uh, last year and now you have some exciting news. So tell me a little bit about the uh, Casio 330 and uh, some of the things you're really excited about. Well, the Casio 330 is a parallel hybrid aircraft. It means that it can take off pure electric, land pure electric. 
taxi pure electric. So it's very prone to low noise when you do operations on ground. And then when you're in altitude, based on the distance you want to cover, you can say pure electric or you have to extend the range with a thermal engine. Kawasaki uh, is now a partner and investor into Voltero. So it's very important for us because we have a skin in the game. And uh, they're bringing to us uh, very high performance, you know, engines. I mean, gasoline first, and then we're going to move slowly into biofuel and then into hydrogen. The, they have a, the roadmap that really corresponds to our needs. And that's very important. The other partner that is very important to us is Avidine. Avidine came with its quantum suite. Uh, it's one of the first you can see now in, you know, uh, in this air show, but even before. And uh, it's a 4K definition, absolutely fantastic. And Avidine is so innovative that they have adapted their suite to our needs. So because, you know, there are not too many uh, electric uh, hybrid aircrafts these days. So that was, uh, those are very good partnership that we're displaying here. In addition to DTC, who is making this hydrogen reservoir liquid that we will be implementing at the end of 2024 in a Casio 330 hybrid hydrogen, I mean, electric hydrogen, uh, uh, you know, powertrain. Coming up after these messages, Able Flight Wing Ceremony. Wouldn't it be nice to be accurate all the time? Our generation can trust their fuel gauge, can you? Here at SICE, we are revolutionizing the world of aviation one aircraft at a time. We are committed to providing an accurate, safe, and reliable fuel level rating, as well as providing you with the highest level of service. Find out how you can fly with SICE today. Martha, do you know how many years we've been going to Oshkosh for AirVenture? Well, I'm not exactly sure, John, but I am glad you brought that up. We're coming up on the 50th anniversary of King Schools. What are we going to do to celebrate? First of all, we're heading back to Oshkosh for AirVenture to have fun with all of our aviation friends. Plus, you can take 23% off any King Schools course. Just use the code words 50 years at kingschools.com or you can call us and use the same code words 50 years. Welcome back. If you've seen something especially cool around Oshkosh 2023, please post it with hashtag Osh23cool. We would love to check it out. Able Flight Wing Ceremony. You can't help but be inspired by the work of Able Flight, who are bringing a whole new category of pilots to our ranks. The people that we award scholarships to typically are highly motivated. Uh, they don't want to use this as a single experience. Although we're not opposed to that because it can help change someone's life just to go through this process. But mostly we're looking for people who, are, again, are highly motivated, they're determined, they're going to stick with it, they understand what's involved. For example, this is not an easy program to go through. It's not a summer camp, it's more like a boot camp because uh, they're going to spend three or four months doing ground school before they ever get there. They do that online. Then they're going to come to the university and live there for six or seven weeks. And they're going to fly as often as twice a day. They're going to fly in the heat of the summer, early morning, late evening. And uh, they're going to face the challenges that you know a person with a disability would be facing right. in terms of transferring in and out of cars, in and out of airplanes all day long. And they're going to do that for weeks at a time. So we try to, when we go through the review process, we try to look for people that we think would, would fit that mold, or right. with people who are willing to work really hard, dedicate themselves, and not give up. What really jumps out to me the group is it's a group of determined individuals that aren't going to let anything set them back. And each and every one of them is happy in their own unique way, despite the challenges that each and every one of us face. And we all come together as an individual of groups with disabilities, you know? We're one group, 
people with disabilities, and we all come together with a love for aviation. And we all come together with a love and a determination to be successful in aviation, even though we have kind of disadvantages and setbacks. And it's really, really cool that each and every one of us brought here with Charles Sites, with Able Flight, we're able to really, you know, progress that. Updates from Comp Air Aviation. The Comp Air 6.2 is here after dodging weather all the way from Florida, along with the turbine-equipped fuselage to show what real horsepower will look like. Also discussed was the Comp Air Wing, a novel concept that Comp Air has recently patented. So the philosophy for this airplane that was designed uh, by Ron and James Hausman, our uh, engineering counterpart, is really versatility and utility. So we want a plane that can match a number of missions uh, in terms of payload, range, and it can also be matched with an amphibious or float uh, conversion. Its gross weight is 4,500. It needs some power. So the power for our prototype comes from the TIO 540, um, which is a 350 horsepower um, engine, but it will accommodate either Lycoming or Continental engines. And for the piston version, you're really gonna need to start at the, at the smallest uh, 300 horsepower up to 400 horsepower. There is a tur turbine option, which we have a static display. We have a, our turbine prototype is, is being constructed now. It's a beautiful looking aircraft, really uh, remarkable uh, balance in the, um, the turbine on the, on the nose and the fuselage uh, really balances out nicely. But uh, we uh, currently have a Walter engine in the, in the turbine prototype, but it can ac accommodate a uh, uh, a Pratt & Whitney uh, as well, or a uh, Honeywell. So the, f the final thing I wanted to go over is a, a very exciting innovation that we've, um, we've come up with, which I think is gonna really change the economics of uh, float flying for s at least commercial operations. And what this is, is we call it the comp wing, and it's simply an airfoil placed between the floats for the commercial pilots being able to take two more paying customers on a one-hour tour is a huge uh, financial incentive for them. So we see this as a great opportunity to help with the economics of those operators. Hearts of Aviation propels Oshkosh. If anyone has a wider showing among the planes at Oshkosh than Hartzell, we simply wouldn't believe them. What's the latest and greatest? What's happening on your way to world domination? Well, you know, this week we have a ton going on with Hartzell Prop. Uh, right behind us here is the RV-14. It's got a three-blade Explorer prop on it, which is a new carbon fiber prop that we have uh, into the home-built and backcountry world. Uh, it's just a, a really good performer in a three-blade and very similar to the 7497, which we call the blended airfoil in the metal. So. We're really ramping up for a lot of activity with vans this week. This week we're announcing a new carbon uh, version of that. So it's the carbon blended airfoil, mm -hmm. and it's a two-blade configuration that'll go on a whole range of different RV aircraft. So same great top-end performance on crews that, we, that, that our customers get with the 7497 metal blended airfoil now available in a carbon version. Sounds like you guys have been busy. What else is new? You know, we're, we're definitely looking for you know, the opportunity to partner, you know, our company with, with other companies that are really focused on firewall forward. That's what we've been saying for a couple of years now. Really anything, anything outside in, in front of the firewall for the engine is really where we're focusing. And of course, quality performance and support is really where we hang our hat. So when we can partner a good brand or company in that world with, with our existing brands and products, we think it's a win-win. I'm excited to see the Diamond DA40NG. They're gonna have the actual airplane with our prop on it over at the Diamond booth. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see the Kodiak 100 over at the Dyer booth with our new five-bladed prop on it. So I guess I'm a little bit biased, but I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of Hartzell props around, around the grounds. So, again, world domination. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know if I'd quite go that far, but we sure enjoy uh, fitting our props onto existing aircraft and new aircraft. And coming up after the break, part two of our annual interview with Jack Pelton. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows actually, so ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind.
This segment is brought to you by our friends at GoGo Go Business Aviation. We are pleased to report that Jack Pelton is excited to be enjoying another Oshkosh. Here's what he's looking forward to the most. Each year I ask you what you're looking forward to most in the coming air venture. Take it away, Jack. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a few things. It's, it's uh, the 70th anniversary of EA is certainly a, a biggie, but it's hard to it's hard to do anything on the grounds or look forward to see because it's just a milestone and it's it's really a, a accomplishments of a lot of things over the over the years and you just have to kind of soak that all in. I think this year our Friday Vietnam salute is going to be probably for me the the best landmark. The, the, the number of airplanes we have lined up to put on the plaza is remarkable. It's going to be capped with a honor flight with the vets returning from visiting Washington D.C. and seeing the Vietnam Memorial. Um, it's going to be a big day. Um, I think the theater in the woods talk about the Apollo program versus the Artemis program will be interesting. Get some perspectives and differences on that. It's just going to be another good week with a lot of different activities. Whisk is going to fly. I think my, my belief, and, and I'd love to get your opinion on this, is uh, Volocopter flew, flew one year, mm -hmm. was manned. Whisk is going to go do autonomous flight. Is this going to actually then pull the lid off the everybody's going to come and we're going to have a new node for the AAM folks? So when do the archers and the Jobies and everybody start bringing their stuff to show it? Uh, they're here. I mean, I want to well, see, I want to see them fly. Yeah, same <laughs> here. But you know, now to be legitimized, it's not Paris anymore. No, it's, it's it's Oshkosh. This is where you know the rank and file are. Yeah, and I'm I'm you know if we if we continue to grow, I don't know how much more we can grow. We're We've taken up every square inch of land you can you can have, but you know, testing the the air taxi concept. You know, go park in Fond du Lac or Appleton and hop over every day. And well, we've had rockets here. We've had yep. everything else. I mean, good grief! We might as well get there. And you haven't mentioned Corsairs once. Shame on you. I yeah, you're right. I shame on me. That's that's going to be a spectacular. Line. We're going to have them all lined up and wings <laughs> folded with startups and wings down and uh, which. <sighs> You know, Fred, Fred Smith called me to, to talk about this movie he was financially involved in called Devotion. And I, oh, you know, gosh. I heard the story and he was so passionate about it. And I thought, gosh, I hope this is as good as he's billing it to be. And it turned out to be even more so. Oh, man, in and, tears. Are you kidding? Yeah. And so many side stories within the, within the story. Yeah. And uh, this, is, this is going to be fun. What message do you have, folks? coming into Air Venture about the state of aviation right now. What's what's Jack's message for 2023 Air Venture? 23, um, I'd say it's it's two distinct paths. One is now is the best time we've ever had for a career in aviation. The track to a, a, a major airline job in the right seat is so quick right now. It's just a great time. That is something that's encouraging if kids are interested. And then from a general aviation standpoint, um, I, you know, I still think of it. It's there's still paths to get people excited about participating in aviation, whether it be flying clubs or older airplanes. You know, an Aronka or a, an old 172, and and participate with with friends by splitting the cost. That's still a a great place to participate and be a part of. I talked to a guy who's uh, uh, been in the car restoration industry uh, for for many 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 years. And he said, you know, that that's kind of died because our roads now are no longer thought of as going motoring because they're just crowded, congested. It, the, the lure of getting in a fun car and going for a nice drive is now <laughs> nerve wracking and, and a wreck. And he went for his first flight. This was about three months ago from L.A. to, to uh, Scottsdale to go to a car show with his friend in a, in a Bonanza. He had never been in a GA airplane. And he called me and he was ecstatic and he's saying, I'm going to learn to fly. And I said, what was it? He said, the sky. He said, this is uncharted territory. It's the romance of motoring in, the, in a nice village somewhere when, in which we could no longer do. And, and, I, and it was terribly efficient. I got to go there and back in the same day, and, and uh, it was fantastic. So there's still that lore and love that you can get people very interested in what this is all about. And tomorrow, our partners at GoGo Go Business Aviation are happy to help us bring you another interview segment in which Jack talks about another serious subject, the future of aviation fuels, and he has some interesting insights. There's a lot of perspectives and things you could, you could say about it, but 
let, let's take the, the, the things that are the truths. The fuel works, it's good, it's out there, or it's ca capable of being produced. As a third party to that, I just don't understand what's going on at the petroleum companies, and I, I still think we need them really at the table saying, tell us the rules of engagement. What is it going to take to get this fuel available everywhere? And that does it for us here, day two, Oshkosh 2023. If you're watching us on YouTube, please do subscribe and be sure to check out our other social media. Don't forget you can get 24-7 coverage of the latest news at aero-news.net. We'll see you back here tomorrow.